Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over some password protection. I'm going to show how to password protect like a button so that if you were to press it, you could reset, but only if you enter the right code. And I'm also going to lock some text boxes so that you have to hit a button to unlock and relock the, the text boxes to be able to enter data. And then finally, I'm going to go over how to manipulate the keypad entry if you want to unlock it and make some changes in that. I'm going to be using a basic display on this, and I'm going to build it out as the video goes. The first thing I'm going to do is add three number fields. And we're going to select them all, and we're going to do all of the settings at the same time. Set it as global. We're going to add numeric keypad. We're going to set all the heights the same. And then we're going to go up here and align them all. And we're going to set the spacing equal between them. And then add it a little bit. So these will be the text boxes that we can enter data on using the keypad. Now we're going to add a button. But instead of a button, we're going to add a text field. For this text field, we're going to set it somewhat similar. We're going to make it global. And for the keypad, instead of making it a full keyboard, we're just going to keep this numeric also. We're going to set the text to reset. And we're going to set the width to 175 and the height to 50. And then move it so it's somewhere on. I also want to make the background color a certain color so, so that we know that it's identified as like a reset or a lock button and just kind of for fun. And I already have a color in there. I'm going to use this lighter red. So now at this point it really doesn't do much. We can click the reset button, we can change the text on it, and we can do the same with the. But in order to make this work, we're going to add a timer, and then that timer we'll use to manipulate these boxes. And then we'll add these events to the timer. So if this text box, every 400 milliseconds, if it is 1, 2, 3, 4, in other words, it doesn't say reset, reset, it says 1, 2, 3, 4, we're going to set all these to 0, and we're going to put this text back to reset. Now I'm going to adjust the time so that you can kind of see some things happening. I'm going to set this timer to 1400. And I'll run this in debug. And now we'll enter some values in. Okay, so we've got some values in here. When I hit reset, this will pop up. And right now it's populated to say reset. If I do OK, nothing happens. But if I change this to 1, 2, 3, 4, the timer is going to see that it's 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to reset all these and then put it back to reset. So in a way, we have a password protection on this before that it will reset these values. But that doesn't really stop us from just clicking on these values and, and uh, clearing them out or making them zero. So if you want to add another level of protection, we're going to add one more button. If you select this one, and then you select this one, and you can see that this one's blue and this one's green, we can click right up here and make them the exact same size. And now we'll go through and we'll set all of it up exactly like this one. Set it to global. Once again, set it to a numeric keypad. We're going to set the background color just like the one above. And in this case, we're going to put locked. And we want to line these two up the same. Just to make it clean. Now, if we don't want these to be adjustable, 
we want to go ahead and set and lock them at the beginning. So we're going to click on the page itself. So we have the page selected. Go to the post initialization. And we add these lines right here. And this TSW, it's going to lock N0, N1, and N2. If it's zero, that disables the boxes, so you can't click on them. If we set those to one, then you would be able to click on them. But now, how are we going to determine if we can click on these? We're going to use the timer for that. And we're going to leave the old code in there, but we're going to add. So if this text is changed to 2, 3, 4, 5, we're going to change the text to unlocked. And we're going to change that background color to a green color, 3, 4, 7, 8, 4. Now once we've changed the text to unlocked, it's not going to be 2, 3, 4, 5. So the next time through the loop, we need to recognize that unlocked. So we're going to add an else if the text is unlocked. Then we want to leave it unlocked, and we'll set the color. We really wouldn't have to have this line on there, but I just have it to be clear. And then we'll keep that color the same too. Now if the text is anything else, we're going to want to put we're going to want to change it back to locked. And we'll set it back to that red color. And we'll do that just by clicking on it again. Once it's set to unlocked, if we click on it and change it to anything other than 2, 3, 4, 5 or unlocked, it will go back. But we still haven't done anything with these buttons. So based upon the verbiage or the syntax that's in here, we can manipulate the settings on these buttons or on these number fields. So if this T1 text is equal to unlocked, then we're going to enable these fields. Else, if it's anything else, we'll disable them. So technically, while it's that 2, 3, 4, 5, it still won't be enabled. But it should happen quick enough, especially once we adjust the timer. So let's give it a shot. Now initially, these should be off, and they are. If we hit unlocked here and we put in anything else, 5, 6, 8, let's say, Oh, I didn't delete the locked, so but you could see that it was there and it went back. So now we'll delete these out. We'll go 2, 3, 4, 5. It sees 2, 3, 4, 5 and it changes it to unlocked. And now we can adjust these. And now if I go back to this and delete one character, it goes back to locked and now we can't adjust these. But if you have somebody that so could reset them with a different code, now they're reset. But one of the problems is, is that whenever I click on this, it shows this. We want it to be empty when we start up. And you can do that by clicking on this keyboard, but you can see that it's locked. If you right click on it, you can unlock it. But you get this message, so be careful in this. This is probably something that, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't do. But I do it, it's just kind of fun to play. So now you have access to all of this stuff. And if we go back to the original page, these two items are of type 116. They're text fields and the numbers of type 54. And that comes into play in the keyboard. So if you go to the keyboard during the pre-initialization phase, it checks to see what type is requesting this. Is it of type 54? It'll do this if else. If it's type 59, it does quite a bit more. And if you scroll all the way down to this else, any other type which isn't 116, so any other type, it does what's in here. And really it's just taking the value that from the thing from the object that's requesting it and placing it as input.txt, which is down here, a variable. And then in the end it puts that input.txt into the show. So all we have to do is comment this line out. I don't usually delete things because then I worry that if I have to go back for some reason, it's gone. I'm just going to set it equal to blank. Now we'll run it one more time. So now when we click on this, it's blank in there. One, two, three. So that's nice. 
but since we only masked with the else, these, well, I've got to unlock it. These fields still show the value that was in there, which is good because that's what we would want. Now, if you had some that you did and some that you didn't, that could be a problem, and maybe there's a way around that. But for this example, it works pretty nice. But there is one more thing. These are password fields. And it would be nice if this showed up as a password. You can click this button up here, and it turns it into a password. The other thing you can do is you could change this type to a password because it takes whatever this is set to and transfers it to the keyboard but you don't really want that you do that right here change it to password because then these are stars and you want to be able to see the value you want to see the unlock or locked so we'll go back into this keyboard again down towards the bottom and we're going to comment out these three lines Or four lines because this is where based upon the type if it's of 116 then we're going to copy over the password value from where it is to what it is now but instead we're just going to manually set it to one now we'll run it one more time here and now when we hit this reset well let's let's do this first so it's open so we hit two three four five so change to unlocked. We'll set this to four, five, six. And now when we hit reset, one, two, three, four, you can't see it and it all works. And now if we speed it up, if we speed up the timer, it'll make this look a lot cleaner. So we'll go back to this page, click on the timer, set it to its shortest, which is 50 milliseconds. Debug. And now when we enter 2345, if we hit OK, it goes so fast you can't see the 2345. And now we can set our values. And it all works. I'm going to upload this to a display and show you on a regular display. And here I have a display. And if I click on it, you can't see the color, but it is red. If I click on it, I get nothing. If I go locked, OK, it says unlocked. Change that to 4 5. If I hit reset. It resets it. So it all works fine on a display. So just for a quick review, we have three buttons that are set up to be text entry, and we just disable them from the start. And then based upon these two buttons, we determine if we want these turned on or off. We use a timer to do the majority of the work. As you can see, it's 31 lines long. And then the reset really doesn't do anything, the button itself. It's just when we click on it, we have it tied to that number field and it just changes the text and then based upon that text the timer takes over and the same thing down here and then we also modified this keyboard itself and you can do anything it's kind of fun to mess around with this but you do have to be very careful so I guess I should say don't try this at home but but it's kind of fun to mess around well that's about it for this video if you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel Thanks for watching.